I've been thinking about safety this week and in the first of these two short videos I'm going to be talking about the Humble Fuse. And fuses come in various different sizes and shapes and the one I use in the uh, solar shed here is actually the standard blade fuse and as you can see these are different colours and that different colour coding is to do with their rating. We've got a 10 amp micro blade fuse there, a 20 amp mini fuse and a 30 amp standard size blade fuse. And this blade fuse, I'm not sure what size it is or what it's referred to, but it's a 60 amp fuse out of a UPS. And at the front here we have a fuse which is most likely to be on the inside of a device. And at the top there we've got one of these big car audio fuses that's usually for an amplifier powering a big subwoofer in the boot of the car. And that's a 40 amp fuse and that might be useful for your main battery to solar charge controller connection. The reason why I like the blade fuse so much is there are lots of different ways to plug them in and here's probably the cheapest and the easiest. It's just a, a blade fuse socket there and you can pop that in, you can put the cover on if you want and of course we just need to uh, clip the lead and there we can put it between our battery and our device or our solar charge controller and our device and uh, that makes sure that the device has a fuse in line with it. But we can also buy multiple way fuse boxes I guess you might refer to this as uh, and this is a 12 way and as you can see there's a tab on the bottom and a tab on the top for each of the fuses and this is what I've been using in the solar shed now for over a year and uh, so I can put different rated fuses on my different loads, my lights, my power supplies, that sort of thing and uh, each one is individually fused and we can see we've got various different ratings here. We've got 3 amps on the purple, 5 amps on the orange and uh, some yellow 20 amp fuses. However in hindsight this probably wasn't the best purchase because if this was all of my loads coming from my solar charge controller I have to connect each of these tabs up separately to the load output of my solar charge controller to ensure I can fuse my devices individually. So this week I've gone away and I've bought an alternative version and here it is. And this version, which has 10 fuses you can uh, connect to, if I take the cupboard off, there we go. Right, and this has one common positive going into it, so I can just connect the load from my solar charge controller into here, and then all my various different loads can be fused at different rates, like that, as simple as that. This also has a little bit of electronics in here as well. There is a LED and resistor and uh, of course when the fuse blows the uh, light will show up and therefore you know which fuse has gone. Slightly overcomplicated, but uh, useful all the same. But why do we fuse our circuits? Take for example this solar charge controller. Does it need fusing? Well, no, not really because this has its own internal fuse here and it may be rated a bit high, 35 amps on a 10 amp solar charge controller but it does have its own protection built in. Well if the fuse isn't protecting the device, what is it protecting? Well I've got a 3 amp fuse here and on the other side of my watt meter I've got a 35 watt 12 volt lamp, a halogen lamp and that should pull just under 3 amps, so the fuse should be fine. But as you can see, I've not done a very good job of this wiring. I've only found this thin wire in this negative circuit. So, let's plug it in. So we can see we're getting 32.5 watts here and just under those 3 amps. There is a bit of voltage drop there from my... Uh, lead acid battery system 10.88 volts so it is a little bit low 
and for some reason slightly pink you know, I guess that's through the reflector at the side but the fuse is holding up perfectly well with 2.92 amps going through it uh, the same can't be said for this cable though which is starting to get a bit floppy and a bit warm and you might be able to see now there is smoke appearing this is very floppy indeed and the insulation is bubbling away a little bit so I'm going to turn that off before I fill the shed with smoke So the primary reason for having fuses in your circuit is to protect the wiring, not the device at the end of it. So we've seen that the fuse is designed to check the wiring and the connections and that sort of thing, not the device at the end. But now I have a 20 watt uh, 12 volt lamp at the end of my device after the watt meter here and I've changed my fuse here to a 1 amp fuse. But the tw at 20 watts, at 12 volts or somewhere below possibly that's well over one amp so what's going to happen if I turn this on well the lights come on nice and brightly it's showing 11.1 volt 1.6 amps uh, just under that 20 watts there 18.3 um, so 1.6 amps yet yeah, my fuse is a one amp fuse how on earth can that be? The fuse isn't blowing, the lamp's still on, the current is still flowing. Well at 1.6 amps this fuse is likely to last for some time. This fuse may be rated at 1 amp but that's its normal operating current. So we're exceeding that a bit, not massively, well 65% you might argue, but yet this fuse is likely to last quite a long time in this state because we haven't gone massively over its rating it will be heating up it will be degrading and after some time it should blow but clearly you can pull more current than the rated current through a fuse however if you exceed the fuse's rating considerably it should blow a lot faster so there's the same one amp fuse in place there and I've brought back my 35 watt lamp and if we turn that on well nothing's happening it's not working at all is there something wrong with my connections or has the fuse blown let's have a look I don't know if you can just see there at 3 amps this fuse has blown which is excellent so do make sure you use fuses in your insulation I definitely do in my shed because it might save my shed one day but remember their limitations they will allow higher currents to go through them for a period of time before they blow remember that they're there to protect the wiring not the device so make sure your wiring is up to snuff. Make sure it can carry considerably more current than you, the fuse. Hopefully you've enjoyed this little video. If you did please give me a thumbs up, subscribe and comment down below if you can. In my next video I'm going to talk about DC breakers so please join me then. Thanks for watching. But here we have three separate breakers. There we go, space in between, make it more obvious.